This topic is history. All aboard! The first word is ancestor. Ancestor. It's a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. It can mean a relative who lived a long time ago, usually before your grandparents. And it can mean a plant, animal, or object that existed in the past that modern plants, animals, or objects developed from. The adjective is ancestral. That means connected with a person's ancestors. We also have the noun ancestry. That means a person's family or the group of people that a person comes from. Some people like to visit cemeteries where their ancestors are buried. She travelled to Europe to see where some of her ancestors came from. African wildcats are the ancestors of domestic cats. The harpsichord is considered an ancestor of the piano. Next we have the adjective chronological. Chronological. It means arranged in or according to the order of time. The adverb is chronologically. The noun is chronology. That means the order in which a series of events happened. Here are some collocations. In chronological order. A chronological list and one's chronological age. The last one means the number of years a person has lived as opposed to their level of physical, mental or emotional development. My files in this folder are arranged in chronological order. you'll find a chronological list of Disney films on that website. Now we have Cold War. Cold War. It's a countable noun. It means a situation in which two countries are not on friendly terms, but are not actually directly fighting each other with weapons. It usually refers to the situation between the US and the Soviet Union during the second half of the 20th century. In the picture, you can see Checkpoint Charlie. That was the best known point for crossing from West Berlin to East Berlin during the Cold War. Here's a usage tip. When it is capitalized and preceded by the, so the Cold War, it refers to the situation between the US and the Soviet Union that lasted for several decades after World War II. People are concerned that the current tensions between the two nations will develop into a new Cold War. Many people were afraid that there would be nuclear attacks during the Cold War. Next we have conquest. Conquest. It's a countable noun. A conquest is the act of gaining control of an area, country, etc. by force. The verb is conquer. To conquer has a few meanings, but it usually means to take control of a place by force. We also have the noun conqueror. A conqueror is a person who conquers. Here's a usage tip. When it is capitalized and preceded by the, the conquest, it refers to the Norman conquest, which was the invasion and occupation of England by William the Conqueror and his army in the 11th century. The Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire occurred between 1519 and 1521. Several European countries acquired territory in Africa by conquest during the 19th and 20th centuries. 
Next we have the verb decipher. Decipher. This means to succeed in finding the meaning of something that is difficult to read or understand, or that contains a hidden message. It is often something written. The adjective is decipherable, and that means able to be deciphered. The noun is decipherment, and that means the act of deciphering something. The Rosetta Stone enabled scholars to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs are the pictures or symbols in ancient Egyptian writing. Frank's letter didn't arrive because the post office couldn't decipher his handwriting on the envelope. During wars, code breakers have often been hired to decipher military codes. Now we have the verb devise. Devise. To devise means to design or plan a new system, method, procedure, etc. Here are some collocations. To devise an experiment or a test. To devise a method or way. To devise a plan. To devise a solution. To devise a strategy. And to devise a system. Henry Ford devised the assembly line method for mass producing cars. An assembly line is a line of workers and machines in a factory along which a product passes. Marie Curie devised a way for X ray services to be used on battlefields in World War I. Now we have feudalism. Feudalism. It's an uncountable noun. It means the political, military, and social system that existed in Europe in the Middle Ages, in which people received land and protection from a lord if they worked and fought for him. There are two adjectives. The more common one is feudal, and we also have feudalistic. Both of these mean connected with or similar to feudalism. One of the main criticisms of feudalism was that it allowed little, if any, social mobility. In other words, if you were born poor, you stayed poor. After the Black Death, labour was in short supply, which was one of the main reasons that feudalism came to an end. Basically, because so many people died, there were fewer workers, which meant that the surviving workers were in a better position to negotiate their wages and conditions with landowners. Next we have fossil. Fossil. It's a countable noun. It means parts of a dead animal or plant, or the shape of one, that have been preserved in rock for a very long period. The verb is fossilize. To fossilize means to become a fossil or to make something become a fossil. The noun is fossilization, which means the process of fossilizing. Paleontologists are people who study fossils in order to learn about the history of life on Earth. Limestone often contains fossils, particularly fossils of sea creatures. The next word is frontier. Frontier. It's a countable and singular noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, a border between two countries. Number two, a border between developed land and land that is unknown to a group of people, 
especially in the Western US in the 19th century. I say unknown to a group of people because in the US, for example, there were Native Americans across the land, but to the Europeans, there was a sort of border between what they knew and what they didn't know. Is it usage tip? We normally use the word border to refer to a line between countries. The word frontier is quite old fashioned and normally makes people think of historical events or the US in the 19th century. There were lots of guards and soldiers stationed at the frontier. Many people traveled to the Western frontier in the hope of a better life. Next we have Ice Age. Ice Age. This is a countable and singular noun. It means one of the long periods of time thousands of years ago when a lot of the earth was covered in ice. A little usage tip. When it is capitalized and preceded by the, the Ice Age, it refers to the most recent of Earth's Ice Ages, which ended about 11,700 years ago. According to scientists, there have been five major Ice Ages throughout Earth's history. The woolly mammoth was an animal that lived during the Ice Age. In the picture, you can see a skeleton of a woolly mammoth. Now we have Iron Curtain. Iron Curtain. It's a singular noun. It's always preceded by the. The Iron Curtain was the political boundary that existed between Western Europe and the communist countries of Central and Eastern Europe during the Cold War. Travel between Eastern and Western Europe increased dramatically when the Iron Curtain was lifted. His family migrated to Canada after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Now we have nobility. Nobility. It's an uncountable and singular noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, the group of people in a country who have a high social position and titles such as baron or duchess. Number two, the state of being noble, morally good. Let's see the word family. First, we have the adjective noble. Then the adverb, nobly. Then the noun, noble. A noble is a person who is a member of the nobility. Then we have nobleman. That's a male noble. And a noblewoman. That's a female noble. The nobility in Europe lost much of their power as feudalism came to an end. She has often been praised for the nobility of her actions. Next we have peasant. Peasant. It's a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one. A poor farmer who owns or rents a small piece of land. Especially one who has little education and a low social position. It usually refers to people who lived in the past. Number two, informal and disapproving. A person who is not well educated or who is rude and behaves badly. The noun is peasantry, and that means all the peasants in a group or country. That's related to the first meaning. Peasants in France, who made up the majority of the population in the 18th century, played a major role in the French Revolution. Jim doesn't like spending time with his cousins, 
because he considers them peasants. The next word is regal. Regal. It's an adjective. It means suitable for or typical of a king or queen. It is usually used to describe something that is considered impressive. The adverb is regally. He arrived at the party and made a rather regal entrance. The Queen stood at the balcony and gave the crowd a regal wave. This word is regime. Regime. It's a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, a government, especially one that was not elected fairly. Number two, a particular method or system for managing something, especially something related to the economy. Here's a usage tip. Be careful. It is a false friend in some languages. It does not mean diet. You can say dietary regime to refer to a set of rules that one follows regarding food, but it is not very common and is mainly used in medical contexts. Here are some collocations. A political regime. An authoritarian regime. A communist regime. A democratic regime. A fascist regime. A military regime. And a tax regime. The people revolted against the corrupt authoritarian regime. Low income earners should benefit from this new tax regime. Next we have relic. Relic. It's a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, an object, system, tradition, etc. from an earlier time that has survived. Number two, a part of the body or a belonging of a holy person, which people have kept because they consider it holy. These stone tablets are ancient relics. The house had not been lived in for decades, and inside we found some relics that belonged to the previous owners. Their education system is a relic of the 1960s. In that sentence, relic is used negatively. That church holds some relics of a well-known saint. The next word is surf. Surf. It's a countable noun. A serf is a person who belonged to a low social class in the past, who worked on the land and had to obey the landowner. A serf was a type of peasant who had very few rights in a feudal system. Serfs were almost like slaves, but they were tied to the land. The landowner couldn't sell you if you were a serf. Um, People mainly think of Europe in the Middle Ages when they hear the word serf, but similar systems with serfs existed in other parts of the world. We also have the noun serfdom, and that means the state of being a serf or the system. Serfs technically had a few more rights than slaves, but their lives were nevertheless very restricted. Several European countries had serfs until well into the 19th century. The next word is settler. Settler. It's a countable noun. A settler is a person who goes to a new place, especially a colony, to live there and use the land. 
It is mainly used in the context of colonization. Let's see the word family. First we have the verb settle. That has several meanings, but in a historical context, to settle means to go to a new place, especially a colony, and make it your permanent home. We also have the noun settlement. That means the process of settling somewhere or a place that is settled by people. And we have the adjective settled. That means not likely to change or feeling comfortable and happy in a long-term situation. British settlers first came to Australia in the 18th century. Many of the natives died from diseases that the settlers brought with them. The final word for this topic is vestige. Vestige. It's a countable noun. It means a small part of something larger or more important from the past that still exists. It's similar to relic or trace. In the picture, you can see some vestiges of an ancient Greek temple. Here's a usage tip. It is normally used in the plural. Vestiges. And a collocation is the last vestiges. That means the final traces. The new government is trying to eliminate the last vestiges of the former colonial system. The archaeologists discovered vestiges of ancient towns in this region. When I was in Germany, I visited a very interesting museum. It was about the history of mankind in that region, and it was laid out in chronological order. There were exhibits that showed how the first people lived, and how Homo sapiens survived the last two ice ages. There are also fossils of animals and plants that lived thousands of years ago. Although there weren't any of these on display, there were photos which showed vestiges of ancient villages. It's interesting to think about how differently our ancient ancestors lived compared to us. For people living back then, borders didn't really exist. Or at least the idea of frontiers between lands was a bit different to how we consider them today. There were ancient scrolls with writing, but the text was quite difficult to decipher. Even so, it was fascinating to see these ancient relics. Next, there was a section about the transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture, and how people devised farming methods. There was lots of information about serfs and peasants, the rise of the nobility, and the development of feudalism. Some regal clothing was also on display. Wars and invasions were very common in Europe during the Middle Ages. One major example was the Norman Conquest in 1066, which was when William the Conqueror invaded England. Once a land was conquered, settlers would often arrive. The final exhibits were about the Cold War and the years that followed. They described life under the communist regime in East Germany, as well as the fall of the Iron Curtain.
Thank you.